2022. I bet I've not been out with my camera for a good three, maybe four weeks. God, feels like an eternity. Anyway, it's a new year if I haven't already said it. Sorry to be really boring, but happy new year, everybody. 2022, I am so excited about it. So many plans for this year. Get out in the background, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Hopefully I'm gonna have a good one, and hopefully you guys will have a good one too. So to blow the cobwebs off, I've decided just to head up to the Lake District, where I currently am now. And I'm in the north-ish area of the Lake District. I'm actually at Ullswater. So I just want to drive around Ullswater and look for things of interest that I've not photographed before. It's a, a really, really nice lake and there are lots of things, you know, other than the Duke of Portland Boathouse to photograph. So that's what I'm doing, just to blow the cobwebs off. That's location number one. Right then, as always, let me talk you through my thought process when I turn up to a location to try and spot compositions or things of interest to photograph. Well, without stating the obvious, we've got this amazing old decrepit jetty. And it is old and decrepit, it's fallen apart. There's green moss on there and of course, lots of missing planks. Looking to my right hand side, we've got the mountain tops that look really nice. The sky's quite interesting, the clouds, the light breaking through every now and again. Sometimes there's some shards of light just breaking through, lighting up the mountain tops in the background and that looks quite nice and over to my left hand side well right beside me there's a boathouse I don't think I'll include this boathouse in any of these images because it's not very uh, interesting uh, in terms of a boathouse especially when you know just a mile or so up the road there is a much nicer boathouse that everybody photographs I'm sure a lot of people photograph this area anyway but that's irrelevant over to my left hand side there's a very interesting fence that goes into the lake I mean who doesn't like a fence that goes into the lake. So I'll probably use that as foreground interest, whether I go up the lake or down the lake, I'll see when I go over there. And then just a little bit further up, I can see from here there's a clump of rocks that I think, obviously looking from here, would make nice foreground interest. I don't know if that's somebody's garden or not. I'll wander across and have a look. So back to this jetty. I want to make this jetty from where I'm currently stood now, the real focal part of this image. So I'm gonna get down nice and low, make sure everything is in focus from tippy toes to as far as the eye could see. And because the view on the lake to my right hand side is much nicer, I'll probably go into the lake on the left hand side, maybe get my longer lens out, and I'll possibly use this jetty as foreground interest, but from a different angle. All that I'm sure will become clear. That's my thought process, standing here. Let me just talk you through one of the shots so you'll understand my workflow and the process that I go through. I've already grabbed this shot, which is the landscape shot and now I'm going to flip my camera in portrait orientation and the first thing I'm going to do is look for a composition. Now I'm not really keen on this blank space here so I'm just going to zoom in and see if I can miss that out which I can do but it's getting a little bit too tight onto the jetty. So. I'm going to lift the camera up. How far? How close can I go? About there. I think that's perfect. That looks good. Let's make sure you guys are in focus first of all. So the first thing I'm going to do now is bring up my level and get my level right. I can't bring my level up while the camera's in record mode. So I'll just have to take it out of record mode. 
and make sure we're nice and level, which we are. That's perfect. Now I think compositionally wise, it's, it's not the best. The horizon is through the middle of the frame, which I'm not keen on. I quite like the jetty though, where the jetty ends, there's a gap between where the jetty ends and the land in the background, so that's not too bad. If there wasn't a gap there, I would have raised the tripod, but I don't want to raise the tripod if I don't have to. But I'm going to zoom out a bit more and then lift up my camera to get that horizon down onto the bottom third, because I don't mind having excess sky, because the sky is quite nice, especially on a longer exposure. Now what's really important for me is to make sure that all these angles are right. So this needs to be really horizontal along here. So I just need to make sure my camera is sat exactly in the middle and it's aiming straight out. Because obviously I want this jetty to be in the middle. But the more anal I am about getting this right in camera now, easier it will be in post production. So that's a full 16mm that zoomed out as far as I can. Drop that horizon down just a bit more by lifting that camera up and I'm ready to go. But what I'm going to do now is, because the viewer's eye will be drawn into that first plank, I'm going to lower my camera and I'm going to use my autofocus to focus on the closest part of the camera. I'm now going to flip my focus onto manual but now I'm going to raise my tripod back up. Like so. I've got my polarizer on there already, so I'm going to adjust my polarizer just to darken that water down. That's a polarizer on, that's a polarizer off. In certain circumstances, I prefer the polarizer off. But for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to make sure that that polarizer is on. I want that reflection minimalized as much as I possibly can. Now let's look at the camera settings. Okay so in, in manual let's go through my normal procedure. ISO 100 F11, ISO 100 F11, bring up my histogram like so. Let's slow my shutter speed down and make sure we've got a gap there on the right hand side, nothing is clipping. That's perfect, that's a quarter of a second. Now I know at a quarter of a second, if I drop my 10 stop filter on the front of that lens, that will equate to a four minute exposure. Before I do that, I want to balance the light with the floor. So I'm gonna put a 0.9 soft grad onto the front of the lens to bring that light down in the sky which in turn will make the floor brighter. Let's pop that down like so. Secret when you're dropping a soft grad in is all too often you're tempted to push it all the way down and that is exactly what you do not want to do. What you want to do is just drop the light down in the sky like so there so now we've reduced the light down in the sky it means i can open up my aperture a bit more therefore rendering the foreground a little bit brighter remember i've already pre-focused on the closest part to the camera so all i now need to do is drop in my 10 stop filter like so Remember my settings, F9 ISO 100, turning my camera to bulb mode. What did I say it was? F9. F9 ISO 100, and let's get my bulb timer, which is already set to four minutes. Two second delay. And away she goes. Switch my camera back on to autofocus and I'm going to focus there. Remember I did focus lower down earlier so now I just want to focus the second or third plank in there. That's all I'm going to do. 
and then once again switch my focus back onto manual place the filter back on and repeat the same process For those of you who watch my channel, you'll know that I don't show my post-processing work, but every video that I'm going to capture this year, I'm going to create a post-production workflow video separate from this one. And if you want to know more about that, then click the link down below. I've actually made a video on how I post-processed these multi-focused layers together in Photoshop. That's done. Pretty cool, isn't it? The lights really pan so, and it's just starting to rain just ever so slightly. But I'm done here now, so I'm going to wander further across the banking and grab, if I can, the angle of this jetty aiming down the lake. I think it'll look nice. And then I'm not sure if I'm going to be on private land or not, but I'm going to wander a bit further up. Like I said earlier, I'm going to photograph, hopefully, using the fence going into the water as foreground interest and then onto the boulders as well. like it from here the biggest problem with this is trying to set the jetty up so it looks right and balanced in the composition let's look at this image I'm not happy with this image and I think where you can learn to become a better photographer is to just learn to fine-tune because I could have just taken that picture and walked away but I'm not happy with it so I need to work more at it and let me explain what I don't like. The jetty coming in, the wooden jetty coming in from the bottom right hand side, I think works well. I don't know if it's finished too much in the center. If it does, I need to turn my camera more to the left to push that jetty more to the bottom third. I don't like the way it finishes in the center. But worse still, the background where you've got the land on the left hand side meeting the land on the right hand side again it's all split in the middle and I don't like that I don't like the way that land is split in the middle so what I'm going to do is move myself further along this bank into the left hand side as far as I can as I go further left it'll push that jetty more to the right but it'll also move that gap further to the left as well so what I'm looking for is a split like that. Bottom right hand side with a jetty, top left hand side with the background. So realistically, great photography in my opinion is about fine tuning. I do like that image, it looks good. But if I walked away from here now and looked at this on a bigger screen in a cold light of day, I would not be happy with it. Feel that the image is a lot better balanced now. I've literally moved about 15 feet across, that was all. Um, when I reset again, fine tuning, one thing I didn't like, I thought the posts on the top of the jetty were blending in with the land in the background. And I really didn't like that, I wanted separation. Again, to overcome that, really simple, 
I've just moved the tripod inland ever so slightly, just so I've gained a bit more height. I don't have a centre column on this tripod, so I can't raise the tripod any higher, but that's enough now to drop those jetty tops into the water to give myself a bit more separation. We'll agree that's much better. Jetty coming in from the bottom right, top of the posts are separated from the land in the background, and the part of the land that we didn't like in the background has now been pushed across to the left-hand side. Mm -hmm. 